So I start to sleaze out the door. I push Johnny in. I hold the door <laughs> shut. So I hold Johnny there. Anthony's running up the street. I start running up the street. Johnny knocked the guy out or something in front of him. He catches up with us about 150 yards up the street. The next day, we're up. We're sitting in the lobby eating breakfast or doing something. The guy from the bar calls, calls and they want their money. And Anthony goes, and it, because the guy at the bar couldn't speak English. So Anthony told Ibaragi that he told the guy when he beat him in arm wrestling that he got his guy to pay our tab. So the guy gets, so Ibaragi explains this to the guy at the front desk. The guy gets on the phone, explains it. And I guess the other guy said, oh, I didn't, I didn't understand that I paid his bar tab if he beat me in arm wrestling. So we got out of that one. <laughs> Right. But yeah, the Japan things were great with those guys. <laughs> Good tour. The country blows. The food sucks. You eat Korean barbecue once a day. But uh, the, the rest one's good. And we only worked in front of 75 people a night most of the time. First nights, the first couple nights were good, and then we were doing, because Japan's got 35 different groups going over there. Ibaragi had some sponsors, and he wanted to do the small towns that nobody else was doing. And he knew by doing that, you have to suck up a couple times, 75 people, 100, until you start to build, build it. And that was his idea, but his sponsors screwed up on him. He owes me money, he owes Pitbull's money, he owes, he owes a lot of guys. In fact, I stayed... I stayed in Japan in Ibaragi's apartment for three extra days because I wanted more money out of him. I got about a thousand out of him. I think he owes me like two grand or something. I'm not sure. It's a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I sat, and that's how I knew. To, uh, I learned from Jason the Terrible. Um, uh, Jason the Terrible is a guy who went to uh, the, the Friday the Thirteenth gimmick on, and I watched tapes. You guys have any? Ralphie had tapes like this high, like 10 yeah. different stacks, and I just watched tapes for three days straight with Ralphie. I learned a lot. I, I never saw I never saw a bar bar match. I saw one before with the Public Enemy and Terry Funk, but I thought it sucked because these guys didn't really do much. They come out with like four different layers of clothes, and I'm glad to rip my fucking shirt off for bar bar match. I don't care. But I learned a lot from Ralphie, too, over there, you know, watching tapes and just bullshit because Ralphie's been around the world. But, yeah, Japan was decent. Whose who's idea was it to get um, to get your wife involved in, in wrestling? Like Mine. Years back, years back, years back. Yeah, well, she started, she broke into business with me. We got married, I told her I wanted to take $3,000 out of the bank, and, uh, <laughs> or $2,500, whatever the hell it was, and I wanted to be a wrestler. I was telling her, I know I could do this, I know I can do this. And uh, and I wanted to, I wanted her to be involved, too, so that's how she was. She was actually in with me until that Cairo thing that we just saw, and then right after that, she was gone, and then... Actually, it was her idea to get, she wanted to get back in it. We kiboshed her, me and woman caned her and stuff like that. Woman caned her in the ass a couple of times and then she was gone. So then I'm living out in Utah and I'm having sex with my wife. She's like, I want to get back in the business. I want to get back in the business. I'm like, oh, you're picking a great time to tell me. This. <laughs> She's like, and she pushes me off. You're not getting it again until I get back in the business. I'm like, come we live, on. Live, we live in Utah. I'm flying every weekend. What are we going to do, fly our kids back? She's like, no, we'll move back to Philadelphia. So she goes, she's coming out and getting sex again until I get her back in business. <laughs> so I was like, shit, I knew Paulie was on Monday. She knew the perfect time, everything. She knew Paulie was in the studio. Our show was on Tuesdays. She knew Paul's. I've gotten a lot of guys like Guido, Sabalomo. I've got a couple more guys into this company that people don't, don't know. That the, the Pimples, both the Pimples are here because of me. Um, Guido, Blomo, there's a couple other guys I can't think of here. Cool. So she knows I could just call Paulie and say, you know, Paul, um, you know, I, I got this idea, my wife wants to do this, this, and Paul, I, I said it to him, and Paul's like, I got the perfect thing for her. Well, boom, we'll stick it with Raven, we'll bring the kid out, we'll do, we'll do everything, and it just worked out perfect. So we moved back to Philadelphia, she's in the business, and now boom, she's out of the business again. Uh, was it her? Was it her idea to to go out both times, like this time and the last time? No, the first time it was mine because I wanted her to do it because I, mean, I know I'm going down to school four nights a week. I'm trained, uh, you know, I got trained to learn how to wrestle three hours. So, you know, I figured I could do it with her because I had seen... So I meant like leave the business, like, like oh, leave. Oh, her to leave? Yeah. No, she basically kind of just got buried. Yeah. And I didn't know, and I was so green back then that I didn't know we were burying her at that point. But I was, I was happy. I'm going to always put me with a woman. I'm like, Jesus. oh, yeah, I want to keep my wife over going with a woman. <laughs> Woman's been around the world, you know. She's managed world champions everywhere. Of course I'd rather have her than my wife because my wife's not as established in the business. Right. And that helped push my career a long ways, too, being with Nancy for a while, you know what I mean? She married, she's recognizable, but she was always with people that were good, you know what I mean? So obviously I wanted that. So I didn't really know we were burying my wife, but all of a sudden there was no place for it, and that was okay with me because... 
because she couldn't stand it that she'd be around and I'd have to make sure she knew what she was doing. I had to make sure she wouldn't screw up. And I'd be on her and I, that would make me intense worried if she was going to screw up. Yeah. So, and just put, put too much too much stress on me so they got rid of her and that helped me relax a little bit too. And now that she was back, she wasn't my problem. Scotty had to worry about her. So, <laughs> yeah. so it wasn't any pressure on me. Did you learn a lot from women? No, not necessarily learn learn a lot, but it was just it was good to be with her. I, I learned some things from her. You know, she said, "Yeah, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do this." Or this is how we should do it. This is how this is how that look should be. Can we go for a second to keep this? Mother was not talking to you. All right, so what were we talking about? We were talking about women. We were, you were just winding down the, just about what you learned from, from women. Yeah, I learned a couple of things from her, but, yeah, she's, real, she's a great person, you know, so I, I like her a lot. I mean, she's still, she's total business when it comes to wrestling, and I might not agree with some of the things that she's done business-wise, but who the hell am I to say how she thinks that, that what she should do, you know? All right. What, uh, what about Missy? What was that? What was that like? Missy was great. She's, yeah. Missy wasn't like woman, to where women's more business. Miss, Missy thinks she's business, and she's she's knucklehead. <laughs> but um, Missy was more for show. Woman helped me helped me more than Missy. Missy was totally show. I was totally confident in what I was doing right then, so it wasn't where really anything Missy was going to teach me or anything. But I had I I I liked her being with me, and I liked showing. Doing that sex thing for yeah. people, you know what I mean? That's another thing that's part of my character that, that people want to see. Yeah. So I didn't mind. I, I didn't mind that phase at all. She was difficult to work with as people say. No, she was. No, she was a pleasure to work with. Absolute pleasure. She was a pleasure to work with. Wow. Another big angle you were involved in. We talked about the the uh, the injury, the eye injury was the, was when Terry Funk returned. That was a huge. Fuck out of the box. Yeah. That was that was great. My idea. Yeah, that was your idea. Yeah. All of it. No, not all of it. It was kind of like Paulie saying, look, I got an idea for this. I'm like, oh, well, how about if we do this? So I was the one that got the pants. So the, we had the red, white, blue. We had the same pants and stuff. Yeah. I was the one that got the box. I was the one that got the curtain for over the box and all that stuff. You know what I mean? But, yeah, the funk out of the box was unbelievable. I still like to just see when he pulls that curtain off and, and, and everybody sees it as funk. It's crazy. Bang. Crazy. Good pop. Oh, big time. How did you how did you feel about um, the idea of your son being used when that was first proposed to you? Did you like that or Yeah, I loved it. What are you kidding me? You know, I wanted to I wanted to be a wrestler when I was four years old. My son's six, he could be in a business. My son's gonna be my son's gonna be giving guys their matches uh, ten years from now. <laughs> but go to Tyler, get your match, guys. <laughs> That's what I wanted. Nobody's been in the business. The kid's the youngest ever in our business. It's great. I want to send him to Mexico in a couple of years. Let him learn when he's about that size, maybe ten or twelve. If um I'd like to be able to set something up and have him go down there and learn from some of the AAA guys. He can spend a summer down there or something like that. Does he come back and work with midgets or something. Does he like it? Does he like it? Does he, does he like yeah, he loves wrestling. Yes. He thinks he's the greatest thing on this earth. Yeah. Makes me, I wrestle with him every night. We watch wrestling all the time together. He plays, he's got every wrestler there is. He's got a thousand wrestlers on the floor. He's got five Bret Hart's, five Kurt Eddings. He's got, you know, he just acquires them from places. Yeah. Yeah, my son loves the business. It's not actually. I'd rather be a lawyer or a doctor if he wants to wrestle on the side. Okay, because there's so many whores in this business. But I'm just hoping my career, is, uh, if my career keeps going the way it is, that I can protect him more. Because ten years from now, I'll have my, I'll have a bigger, a higher stature in the business, and, and um, and hopefully that I'll, I'll be able to protect him a little bit. You know what I mean? Keep yeah, away from the whores and shit like that. What did uh? What was your what was your first um reaction when you when you heard about the WWF angles the WWF yeah. ECW angles? Good, let's do it. Big exposure. Two million people were watching this the other night. Yeah, a big time exposure. Yeah. Did you, did you like the way the debate came off? No. 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 Didn't. no not at all. Why? Because I I think Law or made us I think yeah, Law or made us look bad to a point by staying in the ring so long. Yeah, I I, I understand. What you mean. But the. But there, 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 there'll be time for that later, you know what I mean? But, um, but I, you know, everything doesn't always go off perfect. Just because I didn't like it doesn't mean somebody else didn't like it. But that's how I, uh, that was my perception, you know. Sometimes people see things differently. 